FIFA 23 is finally here and you know your boy is going to deliver the goods for you. And today we have a complete attacking tutorial for FIFA 23. If you can smash 500 likes in the first 24 hours, I'm going to drop a complete defending tutorial tomorrow. Lads, let's begin. It's Ronaldo, fantastic. Oh, the driver. Almost feels like a bit of a talk. Didn't really go for it. It wouldn't be an attacking tutorial without a finishing segment, lads. And of course, we need to delve into what works this year. The far post side is still the dominant side. When you compare it to the near post in terms of last year and this year, the far post is a lot better. It seems to go in a lot of the time, whether it's a driven shot, whether it's a regular power shot, or whether it's the power up shot, the new reward risk system of finishing which we're going to delve into very shortly that EA have added in. Far post seems to work the best and they seem to go in more often than near post. Having said that, what I will say is near post itself is very very effective. You can shoot towards a near post and it will go in especially from angles where you might be parallel to that near post or in fact if you are near the byline you need to hit it near post. What I've found is keepers aren't the best this year which means we can hit it near post and it will go in quite often and more often than not. The power up shot you're probably going to be holding an L1 and R1 and be thinking righto the driven driven shot is here baby let's hit it and then you go whoa what hang on what What's what's this animation? It's the power up shot this year. Yeah, I've changed the controls and essentially L1 R1 or RB LB if you're on Xbox is the power up shot where basically it's a risk reward system where when you shoot it's a lot more powerful. The player basically sets himself up for a shot, they will go back and they will lace the ball and it will be a lot more powerful than a standard shot. Even more powerful than a regular green time shot. This is the shot of all shot, if you want to call it that. It's super powerful, and it will fly past the keeper if you can aim it right. But I did say aim it right, lads. This is very, very important for you guys to understand, recognize, and implement. You need to aim with the left stick correctly. If you don't, it will go wide, and that's why it's a risk-reward system. It's harder to aim, but it's more powerful. And I've found the best way to aim is you can point the left stick towards the goal, the center of the goal that is, and just before the player connects to the ball with his foot is when you want to turn it slightly to the right or left depending on which side you want to shoot, whether it's far or near post. It's similar to the heading mechanics, the heading aiming mechanics that I taught you last year. People had trouble aiming headers, and we will get into that very shortly, where basically the competitive master switch setting last year made it a lot harder because we were made to play with manual headed aiming. Same this year with this power up shot. Basically, it's harder to aim, so the best way to actually get it on target is aiming down the middle and then slightly moving the stick to the left or right as you do the power up shot. I find it's more effective. I find you're better off doing it this way rather than shooting left or holding the left stick left or right and it will go in more often than not. What I will say though is there is a setting which I recommend you guys turning off and that is the animation where it actually goes closer with the camera view into the player. I recommend removing it simply because it will put you off and if you're trying to aim the camera changing angles as you're trying to take a shot can actually put you off just that little bit where you might just miss it. So I recommend turning it off and you can go into settings into visual and basically turn off the power up shot animation camera angle and this will stop that angle from happening as you perform this power up shot. Low driven shots, they're back baby, but as I was saying, different controls, not L1, R1, or you'll be in for a rude shock if you use that this year. This year, it's just having a shot with only 40% power or less. But are they effective? Absolutely. To the far post, in my opinion. The near post, they're okay, but not as good as the far post. As I was saying at the start, that far post area is the more advanced, better option for you guys in terms of the direction that you want to shoot. First time shot. Not as good as FIFA 19. You might be disappointed or you might actually be pleased by that. Still useful, okay. If you want a first time shot, it can be done, of course. And they're actually quite useful in certain situations where it might be uh, actually quite detrimental if you took a touch. So taking a first time shot will get that shot away, away from the defender's block past the keeper. They do work. Do they work first time outside the box? They're okay, but not, but not the greatest. He can still use first time shots in FIFA 23. What I will say though, finishing aside, 
is that if you want a higher chance of scoring a goal in FIFA, okay, the best thing for you to do is find the 100% chance. What do I mean by that? I mean by finding the extra pass or rounding the keeper. This can be the best way of scoring in FIFA and in general FIFA. If you want to round the keeper, use something like a ball roll or even left stick dribbling. This will open up the goal and have a tapping opportunity for you. You won't have to worry about finishing if you're in this situation. Again, finding the extra pass. This is super, super crucial and you'll see every single pro player do this. They're looking for the higher percentage chance. FIFA is a percentage game, so we need to increase the percentages of us finishing that shot. How? Finding the extra pass in the bots to a player who is free, away from the block, and who is in an open number to slot a home in goal, where he'll have a higher chance of finishing. If we shoot when there is a defender in front of us and the keeper is in a good position, the chances of it going in are second to none. They're little. Uh, very low so we need to increase them find the extra pass get ourselves into better positions to shoot we then have chip shots and let's just say they are actually pretty useful this year i know some years they're better than others and last year there was an overpowered one that went to the top bins of the goal but this year they're not so much like that they still are very usable especially when the keeper comes out to you and you can think the keeper and all the time he will dive uh, and miss the save and it will go in but it's nothing like last year where there was a broken chip. I haven't really discovered anything like that, like that. So it is still usable. And to perform a chip chop, you just hold in L1 or LB if you're on spots, And then of course, hold down the shoot button and the player will dink the ball over the goal. Heading again, and I will delve into crossing as it is very useful here, but heading in general, quite effective, okay? If you want to do a regular header, I recommend not too much power. Only two bars max, and that's because they will jump high enough with two bars, and they should be able to get a nice height trajectory on that header on goal. Again, looking for that bar post, it'll hopefully finish into the top corner. But if you're looking to jump above and rise above the opponent, okay, what actually will help you jump higher is the power you have on the header. As I said, we can't have too much power which means they will go over the bar if they shoot the header will go over the bar when they shoot it so when we hold r1 and l1 what this does is it does a downward header this will be able to get the ball into the back of the net with a downward motion very powerful and the player will be able to jump higher than the opponent Moving in to finesses outside the box is a different segment because in my opinion long shots are a whole nother ball game lads. In terms of long shots, finesses are back, especially outside the box and especially when you green time them. I find they're quite effective this year, especially if you're in that area where it's just outside the 18 yard box to the side and you want to finesse at top corner. Are they as good as FIFA 22? Probably not but very effective when you green time them. And I find the keeper has a very weird diving animation when you hit these. So they are useful, you can use them, and I recommend it. The other long shot type is of course a regular power shot from outside the bots. Are they useful? Not really. The angle you get this year isn't the greatest in my opinion. Can't really shoot too far away with a long shot with a regular power shot because I find the trajectory of the ball is not the greatest and keepers are more often than not saving these shots. So avoid them at all costs, get the ball into a crucial area in the bots and find an extra pass or finesse from outside the eight. I don't think it would be a complete attacking tutorial if I didn't add this in. It's a new addition to 23. It's the Travella finesse shot. Oh my God. If you green time these bad boys, my goodness, they are broken. Literally broken, lads. They will go into the top bins more often than not. And I find the keeper has such a hard time saving them. We all know as new things are added into the game, they are more overpowered compared to previous. So I guess that is the case. But honestly, wow, is all I can say. Perform a Travella finesse shot, you just hold an L2 or LT and then you hold in the R1 button and then you press the shoot button and the player does a Travella outside of the foot shot. Roberto Carlos style. Moving on into passing, wow way. What I will say is, and you will get more context as to why I'm saying what I'm saying right now, later on in this video, but passing is more crucial than ever. And the reason being is because, and I will delve into this after, dribbling is very poor in FIFA 22, which means we can't turn quick enough to get away from defenders as they approach. This means we need to pass with quick tempo, high fast tempo to get away from defenders so they can't actually get near us. Because if we dribble around and expect to beat a defender, it is too slow, 
which means, of course, we're going to get tackled. So we need to get the ball away from them, okay? And how can we do that? It's regular ETS slash A passing if you're on Xbox. This is super, super crucial. Band passing is what you want to actually achieve here. That will have a high tempo in your attack when you're doing so. And of course, it will allow you to get away from the attacker, from the defenders, when they are attempting to get the ball off you and tackle you. And I honestly recommend regular passing, ETS A, as the standard way of passing for you. This not driven passing, not through balls, but regular at a pass. Very similar to FIFA 2, but this year it's more important than ever. The driven pass is back. And I say back because we all know how good they were in FIFA 22. Is it as good as back then at the start of 22? Absolutely not. Is it better towards the back end of 22 when they have patched it? Absolutely. Driven passes are back in FIFA 23. You can use them. They do lock onto your attacker. Are they broken? No, they're not. You need to use them within reason. And especially if the attacker is near a defender, the ball is obviously not going to get to that attacker like it did in 22 at the start. But if they are in relatively uh, a large amount of space away from that defense, the driven pass is very good. It increases the tempo. It's a quick pass across the pit. And I find it does lock on better than towards the back end of 22. Can use them. Very good inside the box to cut it back, tap in opportunity, and very good for moving the ball across the pitch at a fast fashion. Final tip for you guys, though, is to ensure that you are facing the correct way that you actually want to pass. This year, if you're facing the wrong direction, the pass will be very weak and very inaccurate. You need to turn the correct direction to pass. And that's why it's actually important with your passing play that you're thinking ahead. You're thinking one to two steps ahead to where you want to go next. Because the touch you take will be super important. The touch and the direction that you take the ball will determine where you go next. And as I said, you need to be facing towards that direction. So the direction you take a touch as you receive that ball in will be super crucial for your next pass. So in that case, the touch is very important this year in FIFA 22, and we do have a segment on that coming up. We have the Dravella Pass. It's brought to us this year. Let me just say they are super broken. You can do a cross. You can do a through ball. You can do a regular pass. Basically, the player will pass it with the outside of his foot, and what it has done is had a whole another dimension to the German cross, and we'll get into that later on. But the German cross is something that is super broken this year, and the Traveller cross makes this even more broken. Unfortunately, it is totally unstoppable. The actual curve of the cross it always lots on to the attacker every single time. When you trigger them from the midfield, down to the 18 yard bots, it always lots on. Or whether you're just doing a regular through ball, these lock on to the attacker very nicely. Do it, you just hold in L2 or LT and the player will do a Travella, whether it's a pass, whether it's a through ball, or whether it's a cross. Taking a touch, one of the most crucial aspects of keeping possession, keeping you back to the opponent, determining where the play will go and making a correct pass to another attacker. What is a touch? Briefly, it's basically the touch as you first time receive the ball and the direction you take that ball from the passer to the receiver, okay? And you must take a touch to space this year. It is absolutely necessary. Reason being, I did mention it before, dribbling is gone. It really has. It's so hard to left it dribble this year, which means we need to find ways of getting away from defenders first time before they can make that tackle because we can't turn quick enough, okay? And the touch direction is super important for this. Take it into the space, keep your back to the opponent, and take it into a direction more so to where it will actually determine where your nuts pass will be. Because if I take a touch towards the direction where I want to pass next, he'll be in a better position to pass and he'll be facing that direction. I did mention it, but take a touch with your back to the opponent. Keeping your back to the opponent is one of the most crucial aspects, one of the most basic aspects in FIFA. Taking a touch and keeping your back to the opponent is one of the most basic but crucial aspects in FIFA. It's simple as you think, but it actually is super important. Take it into the space and keep the back to the opponent, take that ball in. Doing so will make it very hard for the defender to go through you and get the ball back, which means we really need to work on our touch and taking it into the space and keeping our back to them. Now, there will be a complete taking a touch tutorial coming up for you guys over the next week or so. So be sure to watch out for that. It'll be jam packed for you guys. So be sure to keep an eye out for it. Tempo, it is literally one of the most crucial aspects of passing 
and attacking in FIFA 23, simply because, as I said before, it's hard to turn, which means we need to have a high tempo to get away from defenders because we can't spend too much time on the ball. So when we're passing, we need to keep a high tempo. First time passes when they're available. Not forced though. If the pass is not on first time, take your time, do a still move into the space and keep your back to the opponent. Go back if you need, but still have a high tempo and people get this confused. When I say don't rush in the attack, they think, okay, well, he says don't rush, so I need to be slow on the ball. No, be fast on the ball. Have quick tick attacker passing. First time from attacker to attacker, but don't rush the ball forwards. As I said, go back if you need. And as I said, tempo is super important because we can't turn away from defenders. So keeping a high tempo is very important. Do it as you're going forward. And when the opportunity is there, first time passes are key. The one thing I want to mention also is that quick passes first time passes are unpredictable and you want to add unpredictability into your attack. If you're just lardy darty dribbling forwards, taking your time, you are super readable. And if you're versing a high caliber player, like a pro, okay, we're going to pick you apart. We're going to press you high up the pitch. You're going to have nowhere to go. You ever been in situations when you're attacking forwards, you're in the defense, you've got the ball with your wing back and you all of a sudden lose the ball in dangerous areas. That's because you're probably playing an opponent very good at press and he knows what he's doing. How do we overcome this? it's from having quicker passes because it's more unpredictable and our opponent doesn't know where we're going next. Skill moves, my God, are they more necessary than ever? I'm telling you now, skill moves are probably gonna be one of the most go-to attacking aspects in FIFA 23, simply because we can't dribble. I'm gonna get into dribble shortly. I've been talking about dribbling a lot, but the thing about skill moves is we can use them to take them into space. Unlike what we could do with dribbling last year in FIFA 22, where we could dribble to the space and burst into it, this year we need skill moves to do so. And this is five skill moves that I recommend you guys learning right now to adapt and use in FIFA 23. The step over, my goodness, it's probably the most overpowered skill move or most vital skill move at least this year in FIFA 23 simply because it's a great skill move to burst into space. It's very quick in the execution and is also hard to tackle. It kind of reminds me of 21. It really does. To perform it, you need to point the right stick forwards to where the player is facing and then rotate around either anti-clockwise or clockwise to the side of him. So it's forwards at 12 and then either anti-clockwise round to nine, which is the left of the player, or clockwise around to three, which is the right of the player. And then they'll perform the step overs. And as they're doing that, you point the left stick to the side that you want to exit out. And I recommend the front forward facing side because that is actually a very, very quick in the execution version of that skill move and can burst into space with this, okay? The step over, super useful, very crucial this year. The ball roll, yet another one lads, that I recommend to you guys. The ball roll is simple, it's just pointing the right stick, either to the left or to the right of the player, and holding it for a split second, either one to two seconds. Play it as a ball roll and it's great for getting into some space and also allowing yourself to pass into another attacker because it gives you that angle that you need to pass and with dribbling being so slow, we can't turn to get that angle this year. So the ball roll is super effective for that. The reverse and elastico. So I'd said both because the reverse elastico and elastico are I would say two peas in a pod because they're both similar and very, very effective. Perform the elastico itself, you're entering in at the right of the player, so three o'clock and rotating clockwise around to the back of him, which is six o'clock. So it's around the back, okay? The reverse is similar, but it's the reverse, obviously in the name, action with the right stick. You're entering in at nine o'clock, which is the left of the player, and then rotating around to the back of him, which is six o'clock, of course. They will perform the elastico or the reverse elastico, depending on which direction you go. It is super quick this year, very, very effective. And the reason why I like it is because it bursts in into space again another skill move that we can use in alternative to left stick dribbling because it's so slow so we can burst to the right or left which means of course we can get past defenders via space super effective the back heel to ball roll my goodness is this useful not so much for creating space or substituting for dribbling per se but very very good for beating defenders one-on-one -on -one. it takes it to the side and they ball roll past them and what I found is it's so glitchy they can't tackle it I've had so many troubles trying to tackle this off pro players as I've been practicing this in the game so far. Let me just say it's one of the most broken skill moves this year simply because of how glitchy it is and how hard it is to tackle. Kind of reminds me of the luck with Keter in FIFA 19 if you know what I'm saying. Very very effective and to perform it you're just holding L1 and then flicking forwards and back with the right stick. So it's 
forwards at 12, back at 6. They'll perform the back, roll, back heel to ball roll. It's so good this year. It really is. Magidi spin cancel. I love this because you can go in any direction. You can cancel it out in any direction. Want to go forwards? I can. Want to go completely backwards? I can. To performer, it's similar to a Berber spin. You're pointing or flicking forwards to where the player is facing inside of him, which is either left or right, and then you're cancelling it out with L2 and R2 or RT and LT. And the player will basically cancel the Magidi spin and then you can point the left stick towards a direction that you want to go, cancel it out. So effective this year, it really is. And I find it very, very overpowered, so hard to tackle, and it's more glitchy than ever, FIFA 23. Skill, move, passes. As I've said countless times, left stick dribbling is gone. How can we get angles for passes now? It's using skill And I've found skill moves then into a pass, super effective and more vital, more crucial than ever. A skill move like a ball roll is very, very good to do before a pass this year. It gets you that angle into the attacker and I find it locks onto them better for some reason. On the ball roll and you pass into another attacker. You will see pro players do this time and time again this year. I'm going to do it, you guys should too. Another skill move that is super crucial is let's say the drag to drag. Drag it back to cut inside and make a pass first time. I've just found that using skill moves this year are so effective on prior to a pass. So it doesn't have to be just those two skill moves, those are two prime examples. You can use others, the step over into a pass, the body feint into a pass. Every skill move, very effective from a pass. The lacroquetta into a pass, very effective, you should use it. Speak of the devil, left stick dribbling. It really frustrated me when I found this out and when I actually started using the game to see that it actually doesn't work as well as previous years and it really does. If you try and turn with left stick this year, it is so slow and you are more susceptible to being tackled with the ball this year. I would say it's more realistic because when you think about it, games in previous years, they weren't, let's say, realistic to the point where left stick dribbling was slower like it is in real life. I mean players can't dribble like they could in pre previous years of FIFA in real life so it is more realistic in that aspect. What I will say is we need to adapt. I've gone through plenty of techniques of us adapting just in those previous segments, skill moves, whether it is taking a touch to the space towards the side you want to pass and also passing itself. I've said we need to have higher tempo because of this reason. Now dribbling in terms of actually going forward and dribbling I want you to spend less time on the ball. It's super crucial. We can't dribble around with the same player like we did in previous years. If there's plenty of space, go for it. If there's not and there's a defender approaching, you need to give and go. You need to release that ball. Release it to a player who is more off free and if the first time passes are available to increase that tempo, then do so. Left stick dribbling is gone. And I'll Repeat that again, it is gone. However, what we can use to adapt is strafe and agile dribbling. These two techniques are what we can use to actually get away from defenders if we need to dribble, okay? I found they're a lot more responsive, especially compared to lefty dribbling on its own. Strafe dribbling, of course, just L1 or LB. That allows you to take the ball away from the defender as he approaches you and what I have found is you can use strap dribbling to take it away from them when they approach you and you can use agile dribbling which is R1 or RB on Xbox to take it to the side of them. So if you want to be agile and take it to the side of the player as he approaches you, then you can do that with agile. If you want to take it back, draw him in, use strap dribbling. That's a very good way of, of determining which technique you should use in each situation. Use these two techniques. They're very, very effective in FIFA 23 compared especially to left stick dribbling. Always though, keep your back to the opponent. Similar to taking the touch, you always wanna take it into the space and have your back to the defender as he approaches you. This is the same with left stick dribbling. If there is a defender up your ass, you need to keep your back to him. If you try and turn him with left stick dribbling, it will not work, trust me on that. They will be able to react and they will make that tackle because it is so slow to turn this year. So the negatives of left stick dribbling and not being able to turn can be avoided by keeping our back to the opponent and ensuring ensuring we're not going to lose the ball in those vulnerable areas. Now, I am going to do a complete left stick dribbling tutorial for you guys coming in the next week. Now, if you want to see that, lads, be sure to smash the like button and drop a comment down below saying that you want that. I have found the technique, however, that allows us to turn a little bit quicker when we're using left stick dribbling. That's going to be outlined in that video. Be sure to watch out for that. 
Recycling the ball, lads. This is a very, very crucial attacking technique in FIFA 23 especially. What do I mean by recycling the ball? It's taking the ball to the wing, having the defense draw out to that side, and then recycling it back into the middle where the space is opened up. This technique I stood by game in, game out last year in FIFA 22. It worked tremendously. This year in FIFA 23, it's no different. In previous years, it is absolutely no different. In my coaching academy, I outlined in a monthly coaching class to my students over there that this wing play technique is something that you will need in every single year. And I compared the gameplay of Tets from FIFA 19 all the way up until FIFA 22 and showed that he is also using this technique of recycling the ball, taking it to the wing, drawing the defense out and bringing it back around in the middle. How can we best do that? Either from a technique of whether you take it where you take it from the wing directly around the byline area inside and try and find those passing lanes past the defenders and make them commit with a skill move let's say or it's taking it from the winger back to a midfielder or the wing back and then passing it central into a midfielder or an attacker almost like an l-shaped pass this is the best way to recycle the ball into the middle open up the fences and in general draw goals in fifa 23. Through balls, they're back. Can you see this little grin on my face, lads? It was taken out of our game back in FIFA 22. If you didn't notice in FIFA 22, where were you? Have you been living under a rock? Through balls would always go closer to the defender than they would to your attacker. This year, it's nowhere near as bad, and I love FIFA 23 for this. We can through ball now without the worry of it glitching to the defender every time. The only way we could do through balls in FIFA 22 was when the, the attacker was in your space. It's not as bad this year. You can use through balls and it would lock onto your attacker more often than not compared to the opposite where it would lock onto the defender more often than not we can use regular through balls as long as they're not too close to a defender if they're too close then you might want to avoid that through ball and in general use a regular pass or call him towards you with the r1 come to receive the ball trigger. L1, R1 slash LB, RB through balls are probably the most broken over the top through ball technique this year in FIFA 23. Super, super effective. It lots on every time. If you got an attacker running in behind, you need to get the ball to him through an over the top through ball, which is quite driven, quite fast in the actual mo movement on the, and motion of the ball. This is a very, very effective through ball technique. Hold L1 and R1 at the same time. Hold down the power button of the through ball and point the left stick towards that attacker. It will drift into his path more often than not, and it will drift in a way which falls straight to his feet. It is very effective and quite broken. We don't need the double tap technique this year like we did last year in FIFA 22. You don't need it. You just need to hold down the through button whilst holding L1 and R1 up together at the same time, and it will perform this through ball which is super broken and getting behind. And it brings me to lofted through balls. The L1 version or LB version with the through ball button triggered at the same time. That does the lofted version. Is it as useful as the driven version of L1 R1? No, it's not. Is it still useful? Yes, it is. It's very useful, especially when the attacker on the ball is closer to the player making the run. The driven version is very, very useful, especially if you're quite far away from that player that's making a run. But the lobbed version is quite useful. When you want to do a little dink over the defense, chip over it for the attacker making the run to run him and get on the end of that ball. Very, very useful, okay? And you guys should definitely use this technique of through ball. The double tap through ball, however, is non-existent. Now, what do I actually mean by that? Well, there was an actual technique last year in FIFA 22 where you held L1 and you double tap the through ball button. And basically, that would do a very overpowered, over the top through ball, which would always lock on. I find you don't need that this year. It's just a regular hold down of the through ball button, and that's all you need. It will lock on and Bob's your own place. The player lock, one of the most advanced attacking techniques, but if you can get it down pat, it's one of the most crucial. Reason being is it is so useful in many attacking scenarios, whether you're in the box, whether you're outside the 18 yard box, whether you're on your halfway line. If you need an option to pass to, it's super effective for this. Now to perform it, it's R3 and L3 at the same time. You're then flicking the right stick to the player that you want to control. Once you've done this, the AI will control the player who is on the ball, and you will have control of the player you've selected with the right stick. 
then what you can do is run him into any position and then press the pass button, press the through ball, do an over top through ball, do a cross even. From the player who is AI controlled, he will pass it into the player that you have selection of. It is so useful, especially in a situation where you're driving towards the byline and you want to drag an attacker back into space for that tap-in opportunity. A lot of the time, the AI will run closer to a defender. That means that when we try and pass into him, it's going to be quite hard to get the ball in. So, and the way of overcoming that is by doing the play lock, selecting him, dragging him back to receive that ball, and then tapping it in. Something I use all the time, and you guys should too. The player lock is also super useful for taking that player away from the defender. A similar concept in the box, but essentially if you're struggling to get a natural passing option in the midfield and you need an attacker into some space, select him. Run him away from that defender and then obviously receive the ball. Super effective for keeping possession, giving yourself an option in the attack, and in general lads, why wouldn't you use it? Very, very useful. Triggering runs. A lot of people don't actually understand that you can do this and it fathoms me because it's quite a simple and basic concept of FIFA and it's been in the game for a long time. If you don't know what this is, it's basically you being able to make a runner run in behind or come and receive the ball. The way you do that is you tap L1 or LB, have one of the attackers make a run in behind. You can actually do this with, let's say, the winger. He will start making a run and then you can do a through ball into him after he does so. The other technique is coming to receive the ball. Now, you can tap R1 and basically what that does is basically allows the attacker to come towards you, receive the ball and then turn and go away. It gives you more passing off and that's the best thing about triggering run. Now, there's actually a technique that people don't know about and that's triggering two runs at once. You can actually have two players at the same time come and receive the ball or two players at the same time make a run. Why that's effective is especially because you can have two runners make a run in behind and have them as decoys and continue running in behind. You can trigger a runner to run forward and then it will open up space in the midfield because the defender, your opponent, is actually attempting to track the runner that you've triggered to make a run so it gives you space to run into. The other thing is also coming to receive the ball. You can do it with two attackers and that brings them into space which then you can have actually passing options with those two players as they draw themselves into those holes. Shielding is one of the most crucial aspects of actually keeping the defender off you, especially when he's on your back. And it's very good for also holding the ball up. We did go into holding the ball up, but if the defender is really on you and he's pressing you, you can hold shield just to protect, protect that ball a little bit. By holding L2, LT on Xbox, they will shield the ball and protect it at all costs. Another great scenario, of course, with shielding is when you're in behind. And when there's situations when you're actually on goal, running in behind, but there is a defender catching. If he's starting to get on your towel, you can tap the shield button. I don't recommend holding it because when you hold it, they will usually slow down momentum and slow down with their speed. And in turn, sometimes you can actually slow down enough for the defender can wrap around you and catch you. But what I'll say is if you tap it, they will shrug them off and use their strength to try and protect the ball. Tap the L2 button or LT button, not hold, but tap. <laughs> Holding up the ball. Okay, this is a branch off from the shielding segment which you just had, ladies and gentlemen. But what I will say is, it's great for when you want to basically allow players to get forward. See, a lot of the time, People will pass into an attacker, and what they will do is they will go and forward on goal as soon as they can, turn and try and take on the defender. The thing is, if you don't hold the ball up with that attacker and let other attackers get forward to give you more options, then you'll be lacklustered in the attack. A great way of holding the ball up is actually dribbling backwards and keeping your back to the opponent. If you dribble backwards and face the opposite way to the goal, you will drag that defender out of his position also, which means you will leave a hole in the attack. You'll create holes, you'll create gaps in the attack and those attackers that you're waiting for them to get forwards will pounce and get forward into those holes which will allow you to maybe put a through ball through to them or in general just open up space to give you guys more options in the attack. It is very useful. I highly recommend you guys not always rushing forward. If you rush forward, you won't give those attackers time to get up the pitch and give you options. And in general, you won't be able to hold up the ball fish sufficiently, actually have a sufficient attack. We need attackers forwards, and if we don't have enough forwards, we won't have passing options. We won't have shooting options, and we won't have decoy runners getting forwards that the opponent has to track for you to open up space. So best to hold the ball up, drill backwards. It's a very good attacking technique. 
crossing is back my god is it good ladies and gentlemen it really is and you guys can cross this year and a lot of the time it will lock on to the attacker and most of the time all you really need is a regular cross just the square or the x button on x button player or the winger will cross the ball in and a lot of the time it will lock on to the attacker you need to bear in mind though that the power you actually hold on the cross will be determined by how long you hold down that cross button of course and you need to determine the power by where the attacker is on the pitch if he's halfway let's say he's in line with the goal you want to hold around two three bars of power if he's at the back post you might want to hold three to four bars of power it really depends where they are you need to judge that once you do it'll be a very very good trajectory because as i said crosses do lock on better this year compared to previous years l1 lob cross now this is very effective specifically at the back post if you want to cross to a player who's at the back post and he's quite tall and he can head of the ball if you do a high L1 slash LB lobbed cross, it will be a chipped cross to the back post, higher than usual, which will enable you guys to head the ball into the back of the net. This is super effective, especially if you know that that attacker in the bots will win the ball over the defender. If let's say Cristiano Ronaldo is the back post and there's a wing back who's relatively short and doesn't have the greatest jumping stats, Cristiano Ronaldo will more often than not win that header. And the L1 lob cross is a very, very good technique to use. The driven R1 cross. I actually really like this. It's a version of the cross where it's basically very driven and hard. It was brought to us by Alexander Arnold. As you know, Alexander Arnold, one of those players who loves to drive that ball into the far post area. The driven cross, R1 slash RB cross variation on the controller is the way you perform this cross. And it is so Effective, especially if there is a player running at that back post area and you need to get it across to him quickly. Also at the front post, if there is a player running towards the front post and you're going to time it, as soon as he's on the shoulder of the defender, hit it with at least one bar of power. It won't go to the back post, it'll go to the front post. Then you'll be able to obviously header or volley that ball in. The double tap low cross. There will be situations where a, a low and driven cross on the ground will be the best scenario for you. It might be, let's say you have the ball in the winger, the opponent hits an offside trap, you're in behind and you want to get the ball across the pitch into the bots as quick as you can, but at a trajectory that allow the player to hit it first time with their feet. This double tap cross, where you double tap the cross button is super effective for this. It's low and hard and quite hard to defend. The German cross. I mean, I'm sorry I'm saying this, but it's back in FIFA 23. It actually works. And let me tell you, pros have been hitting me with this already. And you guys can trigger a midfielder or a defender to run forwards. And if you're in that situation where you're parallel to the sideline or the byline, and you're relatively around halfway between the byline and the halfway line in that area of the pitch, you can hit a cross around three bars of power that will fly into the trajectory of the attacker making the run and it's curved and it lots on and it's very very hard to stop if you don't know what the german cross is it was brought to us last year in fifa 22 mm, probably accidentally by ea let's say and it was found by a pro player in an fgs tournament then went viral and everyone started using it it's back lads so if you want a way to score if you're struggling to you know break down your opponent this is a good way of doing so the lofted pass. I love this pass, I really do, especially if there is a defender in between the receiver and the passer themselves. If you want to get that ball to them and make it actually hard for the defender to make that tackle, what you can do is you can double tap the pass button. Of course, it's on PS5 or A on Xbox, and the ball will be a lifted version of the regular Part, okay, and because it's lifted, it's harder to intercept, which means you can do it over the foot of the reach of the defender and in general get the ball into the attacker. Now another variation of this, the lofted pass, is the lofted through ball. You can actually do this and it's a little bit of a dinked through ball past the defender's reach. Now it is different to a regular over the top through ball of course. The over the top is really high and it goes above the defender's head. The dinked through ball is basically a little bit above their knee so you can dink it over there reach over their interception, pass them and into the path of the attacker who is making a run in behind. It's very effective and it does work very well this year in FIFA 23. Timed finishing. Is it necessary? 
Absolutely. It is very, very effective this year, especially if you can get those green times down pat. And the reason why is because it will increase the accuracy and it will increase the power of the shot. Lads, if you can green time, you're doing well in finishing because it's very, very effective. Now, people always struggle to actually practice this and implement it into their game. They always come on and comment, ah, you know, I can't green time. I always miss time and it's always red. How do I get better? I got better personally just by going to kickoff and practicing different scenarios of green time finish. You want to green time it, and the way you green time it is by shooting the ball and then pressing the shoot button again as the player connects with the ball. So you're shooting, loading the power up, then pressing shoot again as the player's foot connects with the ball. And if you time it right, and you need to time it, the second press of the shoot button as the player connects, if you time it, then what will happen is the shot will be more powerful and it will be more accurate. It's very, very effective this year in FIFA 23. The final tip that I do want to give you for green time finishing is the fact that you need to get used to the timing of it and it will come second nature. If you attempt to green time shots more often than not, and you continue to get green times more often than not, you will eventually get to the point where 95% of your shots will be green time if you attempt to time them. And how do we do that? It's from having muscle memory. The way I have got better at green time finishing over the years and pro players in general is through muscle memory. Yes, you can practice, you know, trying to time it with the hand-eye coordination of, okay, I'm gonna press it again after I shoot the button and hopefully I'll be able to green time it. But there's a point in time where you won't actually have time to think about it. It will just need to be muscle memory and you will get to the point where green timing shots will become a lot easier. So as long as you practice them, yes, for the first, few weeks you might red time shots but you will gradually get a feel for green timing the shot and that's what you guys need to practice it is super important that you start using green time now to get used to the movement used to the timing and it will come second nature to you driving towards the byline this is you know a very very effective attacking technique and scenario for you guys if there's times when you can actually drive with the sprint button towards the byline i highly recommend it because it is a situation where you can get yourself into a time and place where you can pass inside for an extra pass for a tap in a lot of people don't do this they'll turn back and they'll recycle the ball and although that's very effective and although i advocate recycling the ball if you can go along that byline do it because there will be times when you can pass inside to a play who's free maybe do another extra pass and then and there will be a shot at shooting opportunity. You can also use the player lock in this situation. And as I said to you guys in the player lock segment, we can use it to drag an attacker back into space for them to receive the ball and then shoot at home. It's super effective and you guys should definitely exploit this time and situation and scenario. The other reason why is because the ball line still works. Now, what is the ball line? The ball line is something I taught you guys later on in FIFA 22. It was something I had in my attacking arsenal for a very long time in 22. And I used it because essentially it was something that not many pro players knew about. It was a ball where basically you could go to the byline and pass along it and it would lock onto the attack. This same ball works in FIFA 23. If you go to the byline, you can pass inside, and the ball will travel along the line, in line, and will lock on to the attacker making the run. From there, you can then pass to an extra pass into an attacker who's free in the box, and of course, as I said, shoot at home. It's very effective, and it still works this year in FIFA 23. Moving on into formations. Wow, what an attacking tutorial this is, and we are concluding it today with formations and tactics for you guys. Now I've always said formations are something that you guys should play around with yourself and by yourself to essentially discover what works for you. Formations, tactics, play instructions will work differently for different people. You are not the same as me and I'm not the same as you. You have a different playing style to me and a different formation might work better for you over what I'm using. But I have recommendation and that is for you to use a wide formation. Why? Because I find you need passing options this year in FIFA 23 and just a central formation like let's say the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow will be too narrow and you'll be limited with the width area and it will be hard to play the ball around. But if you use like the 4 2 the 4 2 3 one the 4 4 2. Anything with width, you will always have passing options because the width will be available for you. And you can drag defenders out when you attack on the wing and recycle the ball, just like I've taught you 
in this attacking tutorial with those segments of recycling the ball inside. This is what you can do with the wide formation. What I'm personally using is the 4-2-3-1. This is a very, very useful formation simply because there are always passing options for me. Cam, two CDM, attacker, two wingers, and two wing backs. I have enough midfielders to drag back, come back on defense to essentially break up the play when I've lost the ball, and I've got width, and I've got players making runs up top, including my Cam and my striker. Super effective lads, and you should definitely take into consideration using a wide formation in FIBA 23. Tactics and player instructions. Now, this is interesting because in previous years, I've always advocated for staying back while attacking, especially for your wing bats. Okay, and the reason why is because I want to have players back to break up the play. But what I will say is, what I've done this year is use the 4 2 3 one and I've had my wing bats on mixed attack. That's because, as I said, we can't dribble as much and we always need passing options to increase the tempo because we can't turn quick enough to get away from defenders. How do we do that in the attack? It's by having more players forward. How do we get more players forward? It's by having our wing bats on mid attack and what I find is can use the wing attack technique that I advocate for better with wing bats getting forwards on mid attack because they will overlap the attacker and give you options going forwards which means we can drag the defenders out better and open up space into the middle. I also recommend having your midfielders on stay back while attacking that's so that you can break up the play if you lose the ball and if you're wanting more movement on top, have two or at least one of your strikers on get in behind. This will give you movement up top and your players will essentially have a lot more go to them and they will be making runs. Let's say you've got Mbappe up top, he will be making diagonal runs to the side that you're attacking up, which means if we're attacking on the wing, like I've advocated before, we can drag defenders out but also have an attacker running in behind to do a decoy or in general give you a passing option for a through ball. But as I said, I'm not going to specify tactics and formations, although I'm going to do specific tactics formation updates for myself and recommendations for you, I'm not going to say specifically use this, simply because it's something that you guys need to play around with and discover for yourself. Well, what an attacking tutorial that was, lads. Wowee. Over half an hour of content for you guys. If you did like this, smash the like button. If we can hit 5k likes in this video, that would be absolutely amazing. Your support is great. I'm coaching one-on-one -on, -one on patreon.com, lads. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching for FIFA 23, I'm taking people from Div 10 to Elite Division in months. It can be done. It will be done. If you want to be a part of that community and work one-on-one -on -one with me, I can help you improve, lads. Check it out. The link is down below. Okay, and also check out Instagram as well. You can keep in touch with the No Money Spent Road to an Event series and episodes that we are doing on this channel this year. And I can't wait. I really can't. As I said, 500 lights in the first 24 hours of this video being up. A complete defending tutorial is being released tomorrow. If you can do that, lads, you know how to defend by tomorrow night. Okay? That's going to see you on the end of it. I hope you have a good day. I'm out. Sayonara. Au revoir. Adios. Salam. Share. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. And lastly, if you do want any pre-gaming fuel or supplements, then head over to atpscience.com, which is the first link in the description, and use the code AussieFIFA at checkout to get yourself a discount. Not only is it the cheapest way to get supplements, but it helps me out a ton, guys, so thank you.